Hi, welcome back to my blog, Eddie's English Literature. I am Ardhendu De. Today, we are going to read Thomas Tarn Eliot's famous poem, The Love Song of J. Alfred Pupok. The poem is itself an epic one. The poem that has changed entirely the concept of poetry and its overview. The unique style of presenting the modern man and the pains he is going through during the war years is the very core subject of this poem. Eliot has presented the person in J. Alfred Pufo, the every man that is hiding under the blanket of reality. So let's concentrate our poem the love song of J. Alfred Prufo, which was published in 1915. The disillusionment of that particular years that, that comes just after the First World War is itself an expressive years in which the way of saying the world, the pain they are going through is best expressed through the three S. Eliot's poetry and in matter of subject, in matter of style, T. S. Eliot's poetry is itself an epic one of stating the modern man, the pains he is going through, the pathos he is going through. So while we understand this particular poem, while we will read this particular poem, our focus would be to understand every man of that period, the modern man in particular. The love song of J. Alfred Pufok is a, a dramatic presentation of a person. That single person is no singularity but plurality on, in the presence of every man's catalog. The man who are leading or rather crunching their experiences through the warring years of the interwar periods. The First World War has just ended or just happening and the coming years are full of doubts, confusions, where moral dilemma is there, where man is torn by its principles. As the mind of the human being is oscillates and vacillates between two extreme ends of possibilities, good and bad, right and wrong, simply the modern man is like that of an, the skeleton of its existence, soulless, heartless, as if insipid, tasteless. Such a modern man is every man and that every man is J. Alfred Prufok. Now, notably that particular poem uh, where the character is focused on J. Alfred Prufok, we should not trace much on who this Prufok is. In fact, J. Alfred Prufok, as I have told you, is every man, is the you and is the very next person who is living with you. In fact, the person who has the short or brief passage of this turmoil yet is every man and that every man is J. Alfred Prufok. The time is boiling that I have already said you. The boiling is not itself that the bombing is there, the philosophical blanket of so-called philosophy, so-called civilization is now tasteless, insipid. The man is toiling hard yielding no result. The death and the bloodshed has put the questions on our philosophical existence, on our spiritual existence. We have become spiritually bankrupt. We are stolen from us the very principles of humanity. In such a condition, the inadequacy and the purposelessness of this modern man's lives become the central point in J. Alfred Prufok's poem. Now, the modern urban life that the common man represents mostly is the very location of this particular poem. Somewhere 
in some location a modern city has been projected in this poem the idea that uh, centrally revolves this entire poem that the proof of the very person who is in uh, talking here he has lost the faith in real meaning of life that might be the tale of every man that might be the tale of you and me the so called understanding of this world the so called bearing of this philosophical uh, burden that we are carrying throughout this uh, civilization which we call decency and decoration uh, decorum of this worldly civilization has been put into doubts has been put into questions if not why this world war is raging why these people are fighting together why these people are facing on blood set now these common questions are being asked uh, philosophically through a beautiful verses here and through metaphors and symbols the choices of uh, poet's own has indirectly or directly stated the fact that the poet is bored so is bored the person j alfred prufo so j alfred prufo's personality has been projected here only to tell you the fact what is going on in front of us during that time prufo is in fact very much conscious that uh, what is happening in front of him as he has become um soulless he has become spiritually bankrupt as he has become a mere effigy as he has become mere a burden of its own situation as he has no control over the aspects of happening in front of him so how he the person can express himself thoroughly so he is incapable of expressing what is happening so his are the text which is disjointed so the personality that we find in j alfred prufock by t s eliot is quite disjointed and dismantled but yet a beautiful rendering of poetic expression the predicaments of life the predicaments of life that he faces in front of us is like that of a bumper in 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 road as it slows you down it makes us think twice what way to go and how to speed up our life similarly in jail, in in j alfred prufox way of thinking everywhere there is a bumper everywhere there is a road block and that blockage is not a single development of a personality but rather it's an accumulated development of personality every man is passing through this kind of hurdles and complexities we as a reader of this beautiful poem must understand that prufock appreciates that uh, the virtues that he must possess but he cannot entertain in him and he also uh, um, sometime uh, is absurd uh, sometime grotesque in his attitude that he must possess something the very spine of his persona is missing but uh, he has pain for that loss but he is also pining for that spine but pining for that spine or the pain for not having it has been expressed by ts eliot in this poem so uh, prufog through the personality of prufog ts eliot uh, tried to express a person who is in search for his soul who is in search for his uh, total caliber of personality Uh, the the um, way we should understand prufo uh, the way we should understand the modern man the way we should understand the interwar uh, period or the persons who are living or passing through these ages is a kind of a sensitive understanding we are not making a kind of satire on it we are not making ironical on it but ts eliot's intention is very clear to pathetic understanding of that person to be compassionate on that person and a sensitive understanding of that person if that is possible then the goal of this writing of this particular poem is successful otherwise not ts eliot's the love song of jl fred prufock is a modern poem the modernity of the text of ts eliot is invested with 
three major categories. One, the complexity of its expression. Number two, the way the poet expresses it. And number three, the way the decorum that has been a continuity of expressing the poetry or lyrical style has been put into pieces by dismantling all the good principles that had in previous examples. So, so yes, Eliot's The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufock, we will find a multiple metaphors, multiple references of text, the complexities and the, the lyrical grace of this particular poem, its free verse and uh, the continuity of the text is its rhythmic expression. The rhythm we will find in text uh, but uh, more than text you will find the continuity of the complexity of the human thought or we will uh, pass through the monologue of the protagonist J. Alfred Prufock as well as we will find disjointed one the ideas are disjointed one but when we catalog them we will find there is a sweet strain flowing within the um, monologue of J. Alfred Prufock. T.S. Eliot is a modern John Donne. You have read the poetry of John Donne, you will better understand T.S. Eliot foremost. Uh, why so? Because a lot of the influential poetic uh, caliber or skills had been imbibed by T.S. Eliot from John Donne. And John Donne's poetry as complex as invested with uh, metaphors, conceits and so is T.S. Eliot. To understand T.S. Eliot, we need a uh, heavy of mind or rather uh, mammoth of task. That task related to reading of the text, reading of the politics, reading of the history as well as reading of the geography. The love song of J. Alfred Prufock begins with a beautiful epigraph. It is in Italian courts spoken by Count Guido in Dante's Inferno. What happens, how it is related, how the epigraph, the epigraph is entirely related to the poem is quite simple one. The epigraph is a ma, monologue or rather expression uh, by a person called Guido uh, in Dante's Inferno. The person who says uh, is the pain that he uh, had when he was having a confinement in Inferno that is the dungeons of hell and he shares it to Dante only with the imposition that Dante is also dead because who is not dead is not allowed to come into uh, the inferno. So uh, Guido without any remorse or without any sense of guilt that no one that uh, his words will not be carried forward to the earth, he confines uh, to um, Dante. So Guido's intention of telling to Dante was very clear that the words that Guido is uh, having or the words he delivered to Dante will never be published. So uh, there is a kind of security. So here Pufok's intention is quite like that of Count Guido. Uh, what Pufok is stating to us through his monologue that the words he is uttering will never be delivered to the world and it will be hidden. But as it was not in the case of Dante, Dante published it and it has a long story that uh, why Dante was given a um, permission to visit into the dungeon. So uh, Guido speaks freely to Dante only because uh, only with that belief that Dante will never be able to return into the world of lives. So is the Prufok's account here. Prufok is telling the freely the workings of his mind only with the intention that it will never be delivered to the world in front of him. Uh, so Prufok's reading of the mind or the monologue that we are going through in this poem will definitely have the purpose. So as per translation it goes, uh, the last line is quite catchy that says uh, that, is, that there is as there is no infamy that as you are dead and my word will not be delivered to the uh, world. So 
I have no fear of infamy. So I can tell you wholeheartedly. So Prupok is also telling what is happening in front of him, uh, but uh, the workings of his mind, the indecision, the oscillation and vacillation, the pain and the passage of his heart, which is burdened by indecision, inaction, inactivity, uh, is a kind of infamy that he never tells in the real world. But as you are a reader, we are the reader. We have the fortunate references of being Dante and listening what Pupo is stating here. So the poem begins. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient thrice upon a table, let us go through certain half-deserted streets. Now, look at this poem and try to understand three basic things. The location, the persona, and the third, why these words are said. Let us go then, you and I, when the evening is a, the location is very half deserted or rather a modern urban city or semi-urban city. That semi-urban modern city during the interwar years and the persona, you and I, who are having a visit in that city is in our understanding. The I is definitely as it is a monologue, J. Alfred Prufok. Now who the J. Alfred Prufok is? It's a fictitious name, the name that needs a more resounding phrases. The phrase that will attract us towards reading. It has an Italian accent. But it does not carry a specific one, the specific person. And who the you is? You might be the other self of the Prufok with whom Prufok is talking about. The inner mind of the Prufok, the other self of the Prufok. When the evening is spread out against the sky like a patient etherized upon a table. Now, just before the operation table, he is etherized, he is unconscious. So, the calmness of the evening has been compared to be the patient who, who is to be operated soon and he is laid on the table, operation table, being etherized, being unconscious by anesthesia. As is the case, the streets of the modern day city or that fictitious location of the semi-urban streets are half deserted. People are hither and thither loitering, but very scanty, very few. And in that location, in that state of mind, in that state of weather, Prupok is just going ahead or Prupok is just going a step away or Prupok is having a visit. And the inside of the mind as well as the location is a parallel here. To understand that page, I will rather call you the half deserted streets or a very country few people that are hither and thither on the location is the very inner working of Prufok's mind. Very few of the people are really harvesting in Prufok's philosophy or Prufok's understanding because the people are disjointed at these turmoil years. Nobody is happening to be a close comrade. Everybody is living their own self and being detached. They are isolated, separated. The world, the nature that is so appealing is like that of a sterilized one, etherized one. The mind which is so jubilant, which is so spiritual, which is so soulful, 
is now insipid as the man is banged up spiritually. Again, if we look into the text, we will further state that in that location, in that state of mind, if the pace, if the world is so tasteless, if the world is so much non-interesting, non-appealing, then who the person is living with, the person he has become introvert and he is thinking with indecisions and here all the time a constant monologue is happening within us. That is you and I, that is me the persona and you the very inner mechanism of my other self. Now as the location goes, the muttering retreats of restless nights in one night cheap hotels and sawdust restaurants with your star sales, streets that follow like a tedious argument of insidious intent to lead you to an overwhelming question, oh do not ask what is it. Let us go and make our visit. The armal location is further extended. There are so many hotels lined up. The cheap one. The one night cheap hotels reference to the every man or that during the what times the reference to sex brothel. Restless nights because the real intensity of sex, mirth, love is missing in this modern man. They are only having a cheap stand, one night stand. That is the spiritual bankruptcy of every man. They are not entitled or not having the quality of the mirth of sex in reality, in real time. They are insipid, tasteless. They have not the quality of procreation. They cannot have wives. They only have brothel and one night stand. So the spiritual bankruptcy has been referred to in a a beautiful social metaphor. The restaurants where the Easter cells ornaments are hanging and sawdust are spread in front of them for mods or to drive away snow. The streets that follow like a tedious arguments might have some visit. Purbog might have ventured out for a visit. And the streets that goes through violence is like that of a tedious argument, a long, tiring argument. The argument is working in Purbog's mind, not externally, but internally. He's thinking, thinking twice, thrice before a decision and constantly arguing the decision that he makes and make a counter decision and that argument is insidious in intent deceptive the argument leads to nowhere argument leads to another argument and that continues so the modern man's incapability of making a decision is in focus here And all those arguments leads to an overwhelming question. The question that you have to face in reality that leads you there. And when that prospective decisive question has been asked or pop up in your mind, it says, what is it? What is it? Don't ask me. Let us go make our visit. 
when the decision decisive action it is being asked postpones that idea and instead he is concentrating on a visit rather than making a decisive decision or action as we proceed into the poem we will learn that propog is going to propose a lady even if that theme is being detached by us even that theme we detach it from this entire poem the question might be anything not only that love proposal it might be anything or from philosophical from ethical from spiritual anything we as a person cannot have the capability of making a decision we have thousand indecision thousand oscillation and vacillation that like that of a pendulum never reach a point that indecisive nature of us is in focus so instead of making any such of indecision making such a burden a modern man need a spine erect so to make a decisive action or decision as we are having none of this we are leading towards a simple inaction that inaction but not in action of mental strength so let us go and make our visit just make a visit as usual but never take a decision in the room the women come and go talking of michael angelo we have just learned that propog used to visit some modern suburb or sub towns and those lanes those cheap hotels and there were some companion those companions were some women and their fashions are talking of michael angelo the famous sculptor painter and poet michael angelo is their reference of talking each and every time to show that they are learned and fashionable and these women come and go inside of the propox mind as well as in inside of the hotel come and out so as fragile as these women coming into the life of propog as fragile is that women talking as they are talking about michael angelo and all such of learned things but in reality they don't have all such qualities probably as their vacuum is being represented or their insipid nature or in their um tasteless nature of talking or rather their um, spiritual bankruptcy has been hinted as these lines repeat several times in this poem only to uh, say the surrounding persona that prophok is used to visit the yellow fog that drops its back upon the window panes the yellow smoke that drops its muzzle in the window panes licked its tongue into the corners of the evening lingered upon its back the soot that falls from chimneys slipped by the trees made a sudden leap and seeing that it was a soft october night curled once about the house and fell asleep the beautiful lines here are a beautiful imagery of cat you know cat cat malingers and fidgets before taking a decision as indecisive is propog as indecisive is modern man similar the cat imagery is quite appropriate here the atmosphere surrounding is like that of a cat how the cat behaves is like that of reference here the yellow fog is everywhere from the window panes it rubs its back the yellow smoke that drafts is muzzle in the window panes there also 
it rubs its nose and mouth and in the evening time each and every corner there it is licking its tongue in the drain in the pools in the over the chimneys over the terrace everywhere there is fog fog is in reference also the fogginess of purpok's mind the haziness of modern man the indecisive nature of modern man the fog of the mind is the fog of our mental state the fog of indecision and it's of every man and seeing that it is it was a soft october night as it was a soft october night as it was fog then suddenly it curled into the house and fell asleep so suddenly it went away it went away so it also refers that even though there is fog there is a certain kind of asleep of that fogginess but that fogginess or the asleep state or the awakening of the real self is very short term very brief term so the beautiful imagery is here quite interesting and indeed there will be time that particular phrase is biblical one as well as in may in many of the poems particularly uh, from to his quite mystery we can find out this uh, reference there will be time because the lover is proposing to the lady love that if there is granted penalty of time so there is no objection of making platonic love sitting hand to hand so there is no need of physical intimacy so there will be time there will be time that particular phrase is being repeated here only to hint that indecisive nature of us uh, to delaying the prospect of taking a decision for the yellow smoke that we were talking about is not only over the house the yellow smoke that slides along the street rubbing its back upon the window panes there will be time there will be time so indecisiveness of making a decision or the prop or the proposition or the proposal with which propok is running ahead uh, with the company of women only to tell the reality that he might have a prospect of love to someone but he is delaying it as there will be time there will be time to prepare a face to meet the faces that you meet the hypocrisy of modern life is suggested here simply we never saw the real face to meet the other person even that other person is showing not the real face so a face to meet a real face is never meeting a real one rather our meeting is like face saving there will be time to murder and create there will be time for all the works and days of hands so time of murder and create so time of murder and create is like that of creation as well as death is both are prospect of making a collective decision which need hard work mental toil but such kind of action or mental toil not have the capability of the modern man modern man is as incapable he has not the caliber or compactness of making a decision or making a instant action so decisive action making skill the modern man is not having not having the skill that one so he is insipid the first reference to every insipidity of modern man is its lack of skill of creation a lack of skill of making an end of indecision so a modern man is like that of an effigy insipid tasteless weightless and worthless if not entirely obliterated from the prospect of the proof of is most probably having a visit to a restaurant they are as waiter is dropping the food on the plate similarly purvog is thinking that he might drop a question on the plate as a easy prospect in a very ordinary way in a very simplistic way to tell him to tell her 
that he is in love. Now, as he was going to take a decision of telling the fact that what he wishes to do, what he proposes, then the indecision comes in time for you, time for me, and time yet for a hundred indecision and for a hundred divisions and revisions before the taking of a toast and tea. So during dining or during a cafeteria, time has become a hindrance for them. Prabhupada is taking time and he also says there would be time for you and me. It's time for my physical guests to prepare myself as it will be time for me, my inner working to make a decisive action or make a decisive philosophical decision to make a proposal love. And during that time, there should be hundred indecisions, hundred visions, revisions, and there will be another visit. There will be another toast, tea. So the repetition continues. The reality of our existence is monotonous repetition, monotonous indecision, thousand inactions, and simply a person who is lacking the spine. In the room, the women come and go talking of Michelangelo. The same reference, the same people, the same fashionable talk, the same tasteless ideologies. Or the effigies. Not only the proof of who is having weightless philosophically, those surroundings are also like that of a tasteless one, an interesting one. Indeed, there will be time to wonder, do I dare and do I dare, time to turn back and descend the stair with a bald spot in the middle of my hair. They will say how his hair is growing thin. My morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the chin, my necktie rich and modest, but as added by a simple pin. They will say how his arms and legs are thin. Do I dare disturb the universe? In a minute, there is time for decisions and revisions, which a minute will reverse. So the lines are heavy with metaphors, allusions, symbolisms. As the time reference, I have said, in plenty of Shakespearean text, as in Twist Koi Mistress, the reference of time related to making life is that they have plenty of time to wander. As Prabhupada is undecided, inactive, inaction, oscillates and vacillates like that of two extreme ends of action and inaction. Do I dare? Do I dare? The simple question pops up. The simple question pops up. What kind of daring action I need? Will I tell you I love you? Will I propose you when I turn back from the restaurant? When I descend one by one steps? All these are merely proof of escapism from reality. By that time, I will go. By that time, bald spot in the middle of my hair will be more. The escapism is one kind middle-aged Prupak might have a thinking that they might laugh at its physical gesture. My morning coat, my collar mounting firmly to the chin, the very dressed up of Prupak is making a, a conformity that 
he is no more that young but making a dress to look young by necktie rich and modest but asserted by simple pin the reality is that though his dresses are of finite taste the simple pin that has been asserted that has been tied up with it is a reality that all these dresses are pinned up or the string that dresses or the reality with which proof is attached with is not at all attached with the personality the dresses simply do not match with his personality they are forced on him they will look at me and say how arms and legs are thin hey prupo you are mere a figgy scarecrow do i dare disturb the universe do i dare the capability of disturbing this universe prupo is stating that my questions do you love me might disturb this universe the reference of dan is so much that this universe is a unification of the two lovers the other halves of the two lover and the beloved if i ask you the question do you love me and you say no or something negative then there will be disturb of the universe who created disturbance in the universe who stated the very opposite of the what world say and made a disturbance in the world take jesus christ take saint john john of arc stated pluto aristotle galileo who states the world the philosophical acclaim or the philosophical ideals or ideas that put the fundamental questions under doubt fundamental reality under doubt so propok thinks his questions might have such a heaviness that will disturb the minds so it's like that of propok the reasons behind propok's indecision he thinks heavily upon his action in a minute there is time so the escape route is there i will find time i will not take that kind of pressure on me i will take minute i will take time for decisions and revisions which a minute will reverse i will take time to make decision make thousand indecision and during that time there will be another indecision and there will be another time that time continues as well as prophox indecision continues and prophox becomes more more thinner more more thinner and bent as well as his personalized concept so we have already entered into the violence of prophox mind the very psychology of prophox is quite evident to us that it has its indecision or indecisiveness that makes him hollow a scarecrow a may a mere effigy of its own existence in fact he is a representative of modern man who has spiritually bankrupt and slowly and steadily going towards nothingness the next line it says the next line it says i know them all already know them all popok says he is well known with the familiarities of all these women all these philo persons with whom he has some affinity or has some titatel or has some social upbringing or socialization have known the evenings mornings afternoons i have measured out my life with coffee spoons the page is quite clear it says the evenings the mornings the afternoons all of these timings were in reference to prophox social upbringing or prophox social bearing 
or proof of socialization that he meets them in the evening time in the morning time in the afternoon in every location of his time they are already and each and every parcel of his time has been invested with that sort of socialization that is called the sentimental upbringing with some social ethos my life with coffee spoons he has several round of coffees and those spoons as the coffee spoon measures the percentile of coffee to be added in a cup similarly each of these mornings afternoons these evenings are like that of a measured time which has filled up the coffee of his life so if we sum up who the profok if we sum up who the profok is the length of profok is that of sums of these evenings mornings and afternoons measured after one after another meetings these are the identity of a modern man's urban lifestyle i know the voices dying with a dying fall beneath the music from a further room when i was with this woman with whom i had some affairs or with whom i am in love those dance rooms the music were dying and in the farthest room there is another music coming up pop up so the festive moods are there and it all prompts prophok to make a decision will i tell so how should i presume but the question is as all the activities are there as all the measured things are there how his question which is not measured by him in his psyche how he can pop up that question out of nowhere how should i presume everybody is busy in their own accents how prophok will invent his story of love in these happenings further it says and i have known the eyes already known them all i have read their minds i have read their minds prophok in decision and prophok's lack of personality is quite evident here as it says those eyes that fix you in a formulated phrase the eyes do not see me as a human being as a entity of humanity rather i am a species as like from a scientist i i am been measured in some name of the species homo sapien in formulated phrase my persona my personality my uniqueness my uniqueness being a person a identity is quite lost and when i am formulated sprawling on a pin again prophok says i am like that of a insect who is being to be examined by the scientist i am lying down like that of a pinned up on the bed of foam and on that bed i am being bisected examined so when i was pinned and ringling on the wall and how should i begin like that of a metamorphosis prophok thinks he has turned into a insect that insect is lying on the scientific scient- scient- lab scientific lab to be examined to be formulated then if such is the case in me if i am pinned up if i am not being a person 
if I am not being an entity of persona, then how should I begin to spit out all the buttons of my days and ways? The days and ways of lifestyle of the modern man is like that of a throwing of the end part of the cigarettes after smoked it out. So life has like that of a materialistic gain to suck the smoke in an intoxicated mood the maximum we can. If such is the days where everybody is beginning with that sort of materialistic gain with the prosperity of their own the days and ways are by their own way floating and if such is the way if such is the ways men are living if such is the ways societies are entertaining their life how Prufok should presume the matter of love as there is no way a love can be entertained in that situation where personal thing is not entitled everybody is busy of their own way how should i presume the Prufok's logic is quite clear that me is not a person to be entertained in others life when other is busy in their own me. It might be an escape route, Prufox logic might be an escape route, but the logic is quite explaining one. Again it proceeds, and I have known the arms already, known them all, arms that are bracelets white and bare. But in the lamplight, down with light brown hair, Prabhupada further elaborates the lady with whom he is in love. The white bracelet hair, bare, more seductive, more attractive, more amorous. So Prabhupada says, the perfume from a dress that makes me so disgrace. The perfume is attractive and it intoxicates the very essence of Prufok's logic. He cannot be in a decisive mood as he is blown away by the very attractive ideologies. The perfumes might, might be the attraction towards that lady and that attraction is the very barring of logic for proof of arms that lie along a table or wrap about a shawl and should I then presume how should I begin the scene is quite a restaurant scene when they are seated on a dining table open bare beautiful arms are there or wrap about a shawl then how can he begin how can he presume the very attraction of that lady has barred or blinded the very logic of proof of person Will he then begin in a casual talk, in a casual mood? Shall I say I have gone at dusk? Shall I say I have gone at dusk through narrow streets and watched the smoke that rises from the pipes of lonely men in such slips leaning out of windows? Will I begin to tell a tale or what he has seen? Even that telling of the tale, whatever presume Prufok had thought about to tell a romantic story of him what comes out from his mouth is the very modern effigy the reality the lonely man in such slips leaning out of windows is that reference the isolation and the boredom is there like that of a broken industrial 
world where everybody is disjointed from one another the lonely man with the short sleeves leaning out of the windows can also be referred to the person who has just torn by sex desires or just the scene after sex again i should have been a pair of rugged claws scuttling across the floor of silences purpok thinks himself to be a claws a ragged claws crab should i have the quality of backward journey like that of hamlet's reference it says a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floor of silences if there is dead silence like that of a ignorant creature of like that of scrap in the dark in dancing in the depth of ocean i might have a backward journey to mend all the errors that i have made to make a bold personality in me so that i can propose so that i can make a absolute situation to make an absolute result of my love prospect again provoke says and the afternoon the evening slips so peacefully smooth by long fingers as sleep tired or in malingers is like that of a monologue provox reference to those afternoon evenings like that of a beautiful lady and there the lady who is having long fingers asleep and tired or malingers like that of a cat stretching its limbs on the floor and like that of external the internal you and me seated side by side malingers even though peaceful atmosphere is theirs the way of my person i just sleep as if tired or it just fit gets like cat should i after tea kicks or ices have i the strength to force the moment to its crisis yes the reference is to his coy mistress the sexual meeting is like the forcing the moment into its crisis point it needs strength it needs strength both physically and mentally it's like that of dance page quizzing the lemon to extract its juice have i the strength to force the moment to its crisis do i have that mental strength in me left to make a crisis point to make something possible but though i have wept and fasted wept and prayed though i have seen my head brought in upon a platter the biblical references of john the baptist whose head was cut and brought in pen in front of herod only to disobeying the god in that reference john the baptist has denied the king and his head was in the biblical references of mark john the baptist was beheaded and his cut head was brought on a plate and was presented in front of king herod john had denied the king and his saying was that even challenged the power of mighty rulers and proclaimed the spiritual supremacy and so in their scene john the baptist cut head 
because John had done something spiritually acclaiming but challenging to Herod. It had been a long conspiracy, I have telling it in short. But when the moment was there, when they were having that dish on the restaurant, the plate that had been full with dishes, proof of imagines on that plate, the cut head of proof of is there instead of John the Baptist. But how can he be a prophet? How can he be prophet? Here is no great matter. I am no prophet. I have done nothing so acclaiming. Here is no great matter of spirituality. How can I be beheaded and brought into? I have seen the moment of my greatness flicker. The moment I imagined that way that I should be, my cut head should be brought on a platter, even I think that I am no prophet, I have done nothing wrong or I have not done something great or extraordinary for which I can be beheaded. But that sense of fear made my greatness flicker, winds away. I have seen that eternal footman hold my coat and sneaker, and in short, I was suffered. I was suffered. The eternal footman, the Lord of Death, holding my coat, and just by jerking, tell me in short, Hey, where are you going? Telling the crisis point or telling that I love you is like that of cutting the head of my own or making a kind of suicide and brought myself, presented in front of the world and death should catch a hold of me. I should be. I should find no way to escape from. Simply the Prufok says he is afraid of. So delay it further. It would have been noted after all, after the cups, the marmalade and the tree, among the proselyum, among some talk of you and me, would it have been worthwhile to have bitten off the matter with a smile? Prabhupada says, make it a delay. Make more cups of teas, make more accumulated dishes, teas. And when I am just concentrating myself, when I have been constantly talking with myself, the person of me will bolden enough. So you and me are constantly talking. It would have been a worthwhile to have been beaten up the matter with a smile. Why am I thinking such a great, such a great importance given to my utterance of proposal? Why should I care, care about all these things as I am giving it too much heavy importance to my life? Why should I not lighten it a bit to have squished the universe into a ball? It's no hard matter why I am squeezing the universe into a ball. Is it such a hard task? Squeezing the universe into a ball. The reference is again um, into uh, the platonic as well as in Dan, in Marlow, the metaphysical school of poetry. The reference of ball, unification of two halves of the beloveds. And the universe here, the physical and mental. The physical universe is this and the universal, uh, the universe that uh, the fog is in reference telling is the universe of mind. And uh, why I am so absorbed with my, with my thought that I am squeezing all my thoughts and making it a ball shape and making the gist out of it and rolling it towards some overwhelming question 
and making it a harder question, harder to find out the answer. Why I am giving such a burden of my thought? Why I am making all my philosophical as well as psychological equilibrium of me put into stake when I am asking the question, will you love me? Why I am giving such a dead? Why I am giving such a overwhelming, such a overwhelming importance to my simple question? Will I lighten a bit? the provoxes to say i am lazarus come from dead come back to you tell you all i tell i shall tell you all the reference again shifts to the reality when he is just telling the fact that he might be like that of a lazarus whom jesus christ had brought back from dead all you tell the world the agony that he has faced after death so the reference of Lazarus I, I don't taking it elaborate uh, only to understand the feeling that Lazarus has been that persona who has come back like that of Huido who has come back from the dead world only to tell the rest of the world the agonized uh, plethora or pain that one has to face in front of um, crime or in uh, uh, if he did some deadly actions so, so it's a spiritual awakening if Prupok proposes the lady he will be exposed as Prupok is talking to inner mind he is a Lazarus living in the dead hell but if he proposes the lady his world will be exposed like that of Christ bringing him into the real world coming from the dead come back to tell you all I shall tell you all and from the dead he will tell the agonized part in him the provokes mind the pain the way the uh, of that dreadly uh, agonized feelings of dear dreadfulness and fearfulness that journey of um, psychic world has been exposed to be had to be exposed to the world if one settling a pillow by her hand should say that is not what i meant at all that is not at all the lady might have said oh why are you squeezing the ball why are you being lazarus telling that he will simply answer hey no no no, no. what you are proposing to me is not the way I thought I don't love you or like that of the answer so if that should be the answer of negation why should I squeeze the ball why should I hard toil for that simple question will you love me and would it have been no tate after all would it have been worthwhile so if such is the case would it be worthwhile to say it all that will you love me or not streets provok further continues after the sun sets the door reards the sprinkled streets after the novels after the teacups after the cards that trail along the floor and these and so much more so these are the individual situations that provok will meet and after each of the arrested situation he might pop up with the question do you love me it might be after the sunset it after the loitering in the door yards or on the sprinkled streets or just after reading the novel or just after the teacups are put into the cupboard or after the scarts that trail along the floor and he follows will all these occasions are sufficient enough to come up with that resolution to say do you love me it is impossible to say just what i mean the proof of says that it is quite impossible to utter the state of mind to you but we can understand what he says that the impossibility of his incapability of his and inconsolable the part he is living with is that not to tell 
the tale of heart to the passer by even though he or she is living so close by that is the distance that distance is the very yielding result of modernity materialistic life spiritual bankruptcy of the modern day times but as if a magic lantern threw the knobs in patterns on a screen like that of an x-ray would it have been worthwhile if one settling a pillow or throwing off a shawl and turning towards a window should say that is not it all that is not what i mean at all when even propose even provoke proposes another situation when settling a pillow the lady or throwing off a shawl or turning towards the window if those traumatic situation is prompted up to say would you love me will you love me and the lady would reply in such a way that is not at all that is not what i meant at all no 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 i i don't love you if such is the answer it gives the lady that provoke will be broken like that of a jar of glass so provoke says another situation another occasion to pop up with the question so the courage to face the question and even the courage to face the answer if it is no that power is not possible to exercise by provoke as he is bankrupt the courage is shattered he is no more in his being he is destroyed his destruction is the very yielding result of the situation which we call modern the modernity of spiritual bankruptcy like that of lapsic orsino in 12th night or like that of the hamlet in hamlet propok is undecided mentally torn torn apart with the philosophy of will be or not will be to be or not to be that is the question had been the very question of prince hamlet so provoke thinks himself akin to hamlet and places himself in that dilemma with that of hamlet as gatud had been or hamlet's mother had been behind the murder of hamlet's father or not that had in the questions that hamlet was thinking about and deliberately delaying the reaction so his propok is deliberately delaying the action of taking the story further or telling the truth of the lady that he loves her no i am not prince hamlet nor was meant to be as this thought pops up in his mind propok says the undecided hamlet or the delaying hamlet had some genuine question to ponder about but propox questions are trivial one yet or the persona or the quality that made hamlet the prince is lacking in propox or he even says i don't wish to be hamlet like but and i'm an attendant lord one that will do to swell a progress start a scene or two advise the prince no doubt an easy to difference glad to be of use politic causes meticulous the polonius is there the in king's advice so he propok prefers himself to be an attendant lord who 
always pamper with some swelling words in order to progress his own materialistic gain from by the favor of the king. Make a scene or two to make fun of and entertain the king. Advise the prince if it suits it is better an idea than becoming the prince himself. I will be rather an easy tool and I am glad to be abused by somebody instead of being a persona who can use others. I might be political, I might be cautious, I might be meticulous, I will be with a full high rhetorical sentences, a bit obtuse it may be, at times indeed almost it looks ridiculous. Even I am ready to be get rejected, being ridiculed by others instead of facing the situation. Almost at time, I am the fool. But are the fool fool enough? The fools are intelligent. Even what Prupak wishes to be a fool is the fool in the grossest sense. He thinks himself to be a fool instead of being a hamlet and even and even being a fool leads up quality. Even that quality Prabhupada thinks is missing. But the clarity of his voice is that I don't have the courage like Hamlet. I don't wish to be a Hamlet. I don't have that kingly quality. Rather, I should be below the rank who will be pampered, ridiculed, even I will be more like a fool to be used by others. So here, lack of personality of Prupak is quite evident. Prupak then says, he is growing old. I grow old, I grow old, I shall wear the buttons of my trousers rolled. The reference of his aging is there. Shall I part my hair behind so to look beautiful? Do I dare to eat a peach? Do I have the strength of my teeth to take a peach? The indecision is there. Lack of personality is there mentally, physically. Shall I wear white flannel trousers and walk up on the beach? I have heard the mermaids singing each to each. Like that of mermaids who sings for the brave and romantic as Dan says in his song. He has heard the mermaid singing only in dreams, not in reality. I do not think they will sing to me. The next line it says. So it is quite clear mermaid sung for the brave, for the romantic, only for those happens in proof of streams, not in reality. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves, block, blown back. When the wind blows, the water white and black. Instead of mermaids, I have seen the dreaded sea. The sea with black, white and black, with the blowing of wind. I have lingered in the chambers of the sea. Instead of mermaid singing, I have seen, I have lingered like that of the crabs under the sea. By sea girls wreathed with seaweed red and brown till human voices wake us and we drown. Prupok has seen the mermaids only but in dreams. I have seen them riding seaward on the waves, combing the white hair of the waves blown back when the wind blows the water white and black. So the beautiful in the beautiful scene of sea, he has seen mermaid 
singing together in chorus. Even the barmaid sing for the brave and the romantic. Prupak says, both he and his persona, his alter ego, have lingered in the chambers of the sea. He has seen them. The seagulls red with seaweed red and brown. Everything is so dreamy. Seagulls clad with garlands of seaweed red and brown. And dreams were so romantic and fantastic for Prufok, as like that of proposing this lady, till the human voices wake us and we drown. But the human voices, the reality wake us. Me and my conscience wake up by the human voices of reality. As soon as they have waken us, we, the dreamer, me and my alter ego drowns into the deep chasm of sea from unknown, unseen and black. Explaining Prufok's journey, the mental explaining Prufok's journey, the psychic roads with lot of traffics, with lot of bumpers with a lot of twists and turns like that of a zigzag puzzle is being most lucidly explained by T.S. Eliot in this poem. To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, Prupok is nowhere and he is living everywhere. The time, if I say in modern, it might be at anywhere. But the exact plot and the exact complicated situation that prompts T.S. Eliot for this universal poem of telling the agony of a man, where most of the essential questions are not given any answers. And Gradually, we are detaching from spirituality and heading towards that dark lane where from the return's possibility is the self-designed way of our ancient world of religion. The way T.S. Eliot tried to answer in several of his poems is true to here too, science peace in his mind that is possible only being a peace of universal acknowledgement, a peace of inner as well as outer, a peace not only of soul, only of body but of soul. Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, that might be the possible lucid explanation of this tormented world as a or a tormented person. So, hope you enjoyed this blog. It's a long one. M many of the lines still remain unexplained. It would take more time. If any question pop ups regarding this poem, you can easily ask me. I will try my best to answer you. So, subscribe, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye bye.